Stealing Stories for the Devil is a fast-paced, heist-focused role-playing game centered on the idea of controlling the narrative. In this game, since characters can lie to reality and thus change it, players can drive the narrative to help them succeed while facing down otherwise insurmountable challenges. As a character in Stealing Stories for the Devil, you hail from the 39th century, where technology allows people to change the fabric of reality. After returning from an exploration mission into weird parallel worlds, something has gone wrong. You and your fellow travelers find yourself in the right dimension, but the wrong time. Now you're trapped in the 21st century. Worse, your machines detect that isolated pockets of reality itself are breaking down and they're spreading. If you don't act now, all of reality might eventually collapse. And we're here today with a, a gaggle full of liars. So um, I'm Darcy Ross, a Community Relations Coordinator for MCG. And we are, of course, going to be under the Game Master expertise of Monty Cook. And we have two additional liars with us today. Carlos Luna, who you can find um, all over the interwebs at uh, Carlos Critz, such as on his Twitter. And as well as Erica Ishii, uh, who you can find on Twitter at Erica Ishii, as well as Instagram at the Erica Ishii. Um, and we're all going to be telling glorious lies together today. So I will be playing Bug Out Belle, or, you know, Belle to her friends and those she's not bugging out from. Uh, she is a schemer and uh, is, is kind of broad-shouldered, very known for being tough and strong. And, uh, of course, the, the nickname Bug Out comes from her excellent ability to run away, <laughs> to lockpick and get out closed doors, uh, and a little bit of hand-to-hand -hand -hand combat just to, you know, get us by any obstacles that might be in our way. Hey guys, uh, I am playing Traeger Aeon. Uh, he is a planner. Uh, he has implants in his uh, skin and in his head, both for like data and for translation as well. I think one of his uh, biggest personality traits is that he's always uh, at odds with his own emotions. Uh, as, as a planner, he wants, you know, uh, the fastest way from A to B. But, you know, sometimes emotions get in the way of that. So I think that's what he deals with. Um, I am playing Celia Nozawa. She is a plotter. She's charming and perceptive. She's quick-witted. She is a master of disguise. And she knows her history. She's good at sleight of hand and deception. She changes the past with her knowledge, her, her sudden memory that, but there's one more thing that you've overlooked. Uh, mm. She's, uh, I think, you know, very smooth and very charming, but inside, just like the rest of us, she's a little bit of a mess. You have all gathered in a very high tech, uh, sci-fi looking chamber and the artificial intelligences that basically run the ship have told you that they have detected a problem. They've, they've explained to you in general that there are all over these improbability zones. And one of them uh, out in the kind of the wilds of Montana. And the strange situation is, is that objects have been disappearing or changing, but we do know that there is a key to making this, disturbance go away and it is a specific object but it's a weird one there is a particular lego brick that is apparently in a very large lego sculpture that sits in the middle of the main building of this isolated uh headquarters for this corporation we need to remove that brick from the zone entirely and it will cause all of these uh, improbability uh, effects to collapse and everything will return back to normal. What is this company? What do they do? They make high-tech magnets of a variety of types. What's this company called? Ooh. Um, um, it's the, this company called uh, Fatal Attraction Conglomerates. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. FAC headquarters out in the middle of nowhere, testing crazy things. Um, so as you are looking at these readouts and, and blueprints and, and all of this stuff, 
how are you how are you going to get in what do you see as as potential ways to get in are you going to try to go in at night are you going to try to go in during the day i think one of the major things that fac has been messing up is the fact that uh their magnets have been uh you know grounding the meadow lark which we all know is the state bird of montana uh <gasps> This has obviously gotten to the news and people are protesting outside their building. Unfortunately, that means that they have uh, hired a lot of extra security because they're worried about these protesters. And uh, is there anything else? Lego statue situation. I think it's not just up on a pedestal in a big atrium, as you might expect for an ordinary uh, corporate HQ, but instead it is on levitating platforms, which are you know, very showy and cool, but also maybe prone to falling in weird places or <laughs> getting moved by us. So they're showing off their tech and this beautiful Lego sculpture uh, at the same time. 30,000 Lego bricks all <laughs> forming, what, maybe a meadowlark? <laughs> yeah, they're publicists. Uh, <laughs> 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 the publicist had already sent an email uh, to arrange uh, this demonstration that they're doing to get back in the public's favor. Well, with all the chaos going on, I think we might be able to, uh, even though we've entered the building now, I think maybe a lot of people might be looking out windows and still paying a lot of attention to what's going on outside. So perhaps we can just uh, try to take light toes out of this chamber and, and run across to the nearest sort of hallway entrance. So the crux of this scene is going to be basically you just trying to get out uh, and not get seen at all. Um, do you have a uh, stealth skill? I do. So you'd roll a, a D8 then. So the hurdle for this, the, the, number, the numbers that you want to beat um, are, no, but like you said, no one's really paying a lot of attention. So it's only going to be a 3-4. So right. you want to beat a four. Okay, here we go, Belle. Bug out. Oh, a two. <laughs> However, um, I'm not going to let that happen. I have a card. So you play the not going to let that happen card, and you're going to get to re-roll. Um, now you're going to re-roll and uh, increase the die size. All right, let's see if a D10 will treat us nicer. Uh, that is either a zero or a 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a 10. Uh, so that's great. Um, yeah. So you went from failure to not just a success, but a success and something else. So maybe that's so you're, you're so stealthy that you are able to guide all, the whole group past the eyes of, of everyone around and you are, uh, make your way into a spot where you can take another break and no, no one is looking at you and you can plan your next move. I'm going to play a twist card. What this means is, is that you get on the elevator and now it's asking you for another code and you weren't expecting that. Traeger is smart. He's going to look at the access pad and specifically okay. he's looking for oil and prints, fingerprints commonly used on the keypad and use those combinations to get to that access key. The crux of this scene is Traeger trying to figure this out. This is a good plan. The hurdle is going to be uh, a three, four. You get below a three, four and you're going to fail. You get a three or four exactly and you almost succeed above a four and you're going to succeed. Like you said, Traeger's smart. So uh, you're going to be rolling a D8. Eight. Oh, wow. Hey! Okay, great. You find it the first try. Uh, it, it just uh, looks very, very impressive. And yeah, luckily there's just Cheeto dust, uh, and it and <laughs> Wait, it starts. It's one, two, it gets three, four. <laughs> yeah, it's just really concentrated and gets less and less as you go down the line. <laughs> Perfect. Right. You you follow the the Cheeto trail, but there's a security guard standing right there. What are you gonna do? She's going to go up to the guard and let him know that we have been sent to do repairs on the levitating pedestal. He's wary, he's, he's on alert. The, uh, the hurdle here is gonna be a four five, but you're charming, so you're rolling a D8. Okay, oh, I got a four. That 
is uh, an almost. And what that means is uh, he says, well, okay, do what you got to do. That's fine. I didn't hear about that, but I can't leave my post. I'm sorry. So I think at that moment, his phone uh, starts malfunctioning and the weather apps start going off and warning that a storm is approaching. Liars lies always work. So sure enough, uh, the phone, he probably has it in one of those little clips on his belt. Yeah, on the uh, side belt. Uh, yeah. He's pulling that out and, and looking very shocked and surprised and worried. That works. And he starts, he starts going off doing whatever it is he's supposed to do. As a liar, lying is, is stressful. Lies to reality actually can cause you physical stress, physical pain. So what you need to do is uh, resist that pain. Now, the bigger the lie the more stressful it is. And this was a pretty, this is a pretty believable lie, but it's a pretty complex one because you're affecting aspects of his phone. You're going to want to resist the damage, but the hurdle for resisting is going to be probably five, six on this one. If you're like, if you're tough, then you roll a D8. Otherwise you're going to be rolling a D6. Ooh, D6, yeah. I'm agile, careful, and smart. So I got... A D6. Yeah. That means that the best that you can do is an almost. <laughs> Just like in real life, right? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, a five. You're going to be rolling an injury die. Uh, every time you roll a die, you're going to also roll a D10. And if uh, that comes up uh, a one, then it's an automatic failure. Okay. So you've you're in the Lego room. You see the this impressive, for the 21st century anyway, uh, levitating platform and this beautiful Lego sculpture of uh, a metal arc. But then something totally unexpected happens. This is the turn. A door opens up. A whole bunch of people, mostly men, but there's a couple of women come in. And they are all wearing company jumpsuits. And each one of them has a nerf gun of some kind and they are having this suddenly a giant nerf war fight that's kind of spilling into this room uh there's clearly two sides oh right. i say oh we we i left my uh vulcan at my at my desk that fits so perfectly there's not even any role needed that was just sort of an average kind of uh deception on your part and you're charming so that means you automatically uh, succeed at average tasks i think we need to escalate this chaos what do you think traeger for sure absolutely at that point the uh <laughs> the the metal mechanisms inside the nerf guns uh start firing two shots for every one uh the hurdle that you uh need to uh, overcome to resist this damage is only a two. Uh, but, oh, but remember, you need to also roll an injury die at the same time because you're already injured. Gotcha. And that's a D10, right? That's a D10, but it okay. only counts if you roll a one. One, gotcha. Ooh, uh, well, injury die is an eight, uh, <laughs> and the other one's a two. Um, okay. Ooh. Oh, so that's that's an almost, oh. Yeah. Uh, that means that you're going to, you unfortunately now have two injury dice. Oh. You got them to crash the, the, the statue. The Nerf gun wielding nerds are just fleeing. Um, they're, they're, nobody wants to be implicated in this. They're all just horribly shocked. But unfortunately, even as they are going out the door they came in, I'm going to play another twist card because a group of very serious looking security guards comes in from the other direction. There's one that uh, looks clearly more in charge than the others. That's who I want to hone in on with a lie. There's chaos, there's Nerf guns, but I want I want her to think that there was movement above that she has to chase. Okay, your lie works. She immediately points upward and says, Bill, Phil, Go check out. I think I think I see someone up there. However, uh, Darcy, I'm going to need you to make a, a roll to resist the stress of your lie. I'm tough, though. I can handle it. Oh, OK. So you're going to be you normally be rolling a D8. But act three, you'll be rolling a D10 to resist this. The hurdle is going to be a four. A five. <laughs> OK, so you guys see the, the other two guards uh, leave, but there's still two guards there. What are you going to do? 
And the the woman who's clearly in charge that that uh, uh, Bell told the lie to, she says, "Yes, who's responsible for this?" And she looks right at Trigger when she says that. Okay. Trigger tries to deceive the uh, the captain uh, and makes up a lie about. Um, obviously, this is the cafeteria crew uh, trying to make you look bad because uh, your guy was not in position guarding this. Uh, we were trying to help out and try to rebuild this thing. But if you want us to go, we'll go. These, these serious minded folk um, are still look like they're going to be a little hard to deceive. Um, so you're going to need a, we'll say a six with this particular okay. deception. Okay. And don't forget you'll have to roll your injury dice. Yeah, I got two of them. <laughs> uh, and uh, Celia pipes up and says, yeah, so the cafeteria team has, has also been behind and they were firing at us. You know, you could, you could ask accounting over there and you know, there's still some people leaving and everything like right. they started firing this way and they messed up the mechanism and we are just trying to get it, get it all back to where it is. Okay. Well, you know, you guys did trick them into being basically responsible for knocking the statue down in actual fact. So when you say that, you notice that there's a couple of guilty looks um, as they look back like, oh no, um, you know, we're, we're being ratted out. And so that is a, that's a very uh, effective addition to uh, Trigger's deception. So Trigger, now you're going to get to roll two dice and take the better of them. But okay. you're still going to have to roll your injury dice, too. The D10s are an 8 and a 4. Okay, no problem there. And two eights. Yeah! Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, Lil says, uh, listens to both of you, and then just says, all right, the two of you... And she doesn't even seem to be noticing Belle at this point. She just mm. says, the two of you, you stay here. We're going to go talk to accounting. And they start heading off in the same direction that all the other people have been leaving, leaving the three of you alone uh, with all these scattered bricks and one glowing red brick in the middle. And if you are successful in uh, taking this out, you will have shut down this zone of improbability. Or will there be more complications yet? We'll have to just keep playing Stealing Stories for the Devil to find out.